Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where we will show you how to design steel connections in RAM connection for an analyzed RAM structural system model. So let's begin. RAM connection can design connections for a variety of joints. During the connection design process, we will assign connections to the different joints using the RAM connection database of predefined connection templates, which are separated into different connection families. As we start designing connections, we will select joints within the same connection family with similar forces so they can be designed together. For this video, we're going to be designing the beam column web connections for the first floor gravity beams that were designed in RAM steel beam. In RAM structural system, all gravity steel beams support gravity loads only, such as dead load and live load, and they are assumed to be simply supported, which means that they will require a connection capable of resisting shear forces. If we were to review the RAM Connections database, we would see that there are several shear connections that are available for beam column web joints for a variety of different joint data configurations. Please note that not all connectors may be available for each design code, and the RAM Connection Help Manual will detail which connectors are available for each design code. We will now turn our attention to the analyzed RAM structural system model in RAM connection, where we will design the gravity beam column web connections according to the AISC 360 specification, which has already been selected. Now designing connections in RAM connection is a two-step process. You're gonna start by selecting the joints you want to design together typically joints of the same family with similar forces and joint data. And then you will select a connection database compatible with the currently selected joints. Now I find it easiest to work on one level at a time, so I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the first floor level. To do that, I can right click in the main window, select one of my elevation icons, and then using my cursor, I can draw a fence around all the members at the first floor level. Up in the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar, I can now click on the Hide Unselected Elements icon and return to my three-dimensional view. Now joints can be selected by selecting the members and nodes for a specific joint or by using the Select Joints command. The Select Joints command can be found in the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar. To find this command, click on the Element Selection icon find your joints, and then you're gonna notice that all the joints can be selected based on their family type. For this exercise, I'm gonna select all of the beam column web joints. Now the majority of the joints on this level consist of wide flange beams and columns with no skew or slope angle. We do have a couple of joints, however, that are a little bit different. We have a couple of joints at the front of the structure that are being supported by hollow structural sections. And then we also have a couple of joints where the beam is skewed with reference to the column. Now I can go ahead and assign the connections to each of these different types of joints individually. Or if I have a connection template that would work for all of these configurations, I can still design them together. For this example, I'm gonna to attempt to find a connection template that would work for each of these situations. So at this point, I'm ready to start my connection design process. To start, I'm going to select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the assign icon. For this exercise, we're going to be assigning a basic connection and we're gonna to choose to design our connections individually. Now each of the joints that are currently selected will require a shear connection as all of the beams have a shear reaction imposed upon them. Looking in the available connection types, I'm gonna look for a connection type that would be compatible with both wide flange and round or rectangular columns. I'm also gonna look for a connection template that can accommodate a skew angle. That being said, I'm gonna go with a single plate connection for this exercise. Once I select the connection template I'm interested in, I'll go ahead and click on the assign 
button. After the connection design process is complete, the first area I take a look at is the messages window. This will let me know if I have received any errors or warnings during the previous connection assignment. If I receive any errors or warnings, more than likely it's because I selected a connection template that was not compatible with at least one of the currently selected joints. Here, I'm not receiving any errors or warnings, so I know that the connection template I selected is compatible with all of the joints that are currently selected in my main view window. In addition to that, I'll be able to see all of the connections are currently selected and the connection template that was utilized for each joint can be seen in the data area. Now, after the connection design is complete, I also like to check the status of the connection design. To do that, we'll go to the View tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the Status icon. I also like to make sure that the For Controlling Combination option is selected. Now, we're going to notice that RAM Connection will color code all of our currently selected connections according to their design status. Any connection that's in green means that the connection passed and no warnings were issued. Any connection in red or yellow means that you received either an error or a warning and those connections should be revisited. You can either edit those connections manually to try to get to a passing connection design or even possibly select another connection template that might be more appropriate. If you want to ensure that you don't have any errors or warnings, we do provide these buttons within the legend and you can see that there are no connections with errors. There are no connections with warnings. So let's go ahead and return to our passing connection design. Now I can see that all of the connections for the beam column web joints at this level have passed all code check requirements with no warnings. I still, however, have the option to edit the connections manually in the connection pad if I wanted to adjust their detailing. To do that, you can select any connection within the main window. Now you can edit each connection one at a time through the connection pad, or if you do have several identical connections, you can edit them together. To search for identical connections, you're gonna start by selecting any connection within your model. You can go to the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and use the Elements Selection Tool again, but this time I'm gonna say Select Connections and I'm gonna say Select All Identical Connections. Now identical connections can be edited together in the connection pad. To edit the currently selected connections, we can go to the Design tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and then we can edit the connections. Here within the connection pad, I'll be able to see all of the input parameters that were supplied to the program from RAM Structural System, which include all of the joint data and load data. Now, if any member size changes during your connection design process, it would be important to return to RAM Structural System, make the changes official, reanalyze your model and come back to RAM connection to verify that your connection design is consistent with your current analysis results. Now for each type of connection, you do have a certain amount of parameters that you can go ahead and customize to your detailing preferences. And for a single plate connection, let's go over a couple of those. Now the first thing I'm gonna notice is that we have the plate type that's available. Now it's going to default to a standard plate but we do have the option to go to an extended plate for a beam column web connection. If you go to an extended plate, you can also find this checkbox for beam edges inside support flanges. If I uncheck this option, it basically means it's gonna move the beam to the outside of the column and then attach a plate and stiffeners to the connection design. Now looking in the ribbon toolbar for the connection pad, I'm gonna notice that this connection design is actually not doing great. I am over 1.0 and this did produce a failing connection. Now, if I wanted to get a extended single plate connection to work, I can continue to review the report 
or adjust the parameters. For this exercise, I'm going to say that the standard plate probably worked a little bit better. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that being said, I may also still decide that I want to maybe cope out some of this flange to make construction a little easier. I do have the option to add some coping to the top and bottom flange. So let's go ahead and say we're going to add a one inch cope to the top and bottom flange and it's going to be six inches long to kind of pull that outside of the column flanges. Once I make those changes, I'm again going to look at the top of my screen and see if I have a passing connection design, which I do at this point. My interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it's in green. Now if I like this detailing, I can go ahead and keep it and review any other parameters that I might want to modify. This may be items such as the thickness of the plate, your plate material, you can see you can adjust your bolt size and bolt material and your bolt arrangement. Lastly, you can also adjust your hole type and your welding information. Now, after making my changes, I want to review my report to get a better idea of what types of checks were performed on this particular connection. So in the top of my connection pad, let's click on the results icon. Here I'll be able to see the steel connection results for all of the currently selected joints. Remember I have four connections that are currently selected right now because they were identical. I'll be able to see all of that information and I'll be able to see the design checks that were performed. If I want some additional information within this report, I can click on the view formulas icon and I'll be able to see all of the formulas, variables, and equations that were used to calculate these results. Now let's go ahead and close out of this report. The last thing I like to do in the connection pad is to review my DXF drawing. Here you can see the DXF drawing will be available and we can preview what it would look like in drawing format. We can customize this DXF and I can also export this DXF from RAM connection. Now if you make any changes to any of your connection parameters in the connection pad, you're going to want to go ahead and click on the save icon. This will go ahead and save that information to this connection that I have selected. At this point, let's go ahead and close out of the connection pad. In addition to that, let's go ahead and check some of the other arrangements that we had. I'm going to go ahead and select one of the connections that's connecting the beam member to a hollow structural section. I can go ahead and double click there and here I can see that connection design. Again, I have certain parameters that I can go ahead and adjust and they might be slightly different for when it's connecting to a hollow structural section versus a wide flange column. Again, I'm going to just close out of this connection pad. The last thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and take a look at some of these skewed connections. Here I can go ahead and rotate the model, take a look at what that's going to look like. Here again I can see that the single plate connection was successful. If I wanted to try an extended plate, I can go ahead and do that as well. And I can also add some coping if I choose. If you make any changes, of course, make sure that you save your connection in the connection pad and then you can exit out. Now at this point, the last thing I like to do in my workflow when working on each individual level within my three-dimensional building structure is to make sure I've satisfied all of the scenarios that I was expecting to. So let's go ahead and select our beam column web joints again. Again, I'm going to use the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and use the Select Joints command to select all of your beam column web joints. If you want to make sure that you satisfied all of your connection requirements, you can go to the Output tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, select the Data option, and go to Joints List. 
This will show you all of the joints that are currently selected, and it's a great way to check to make sure that you didn't miss any forces that need to be resisted by a connection design. Here I can see for all of the beam column web joints that are currently selected that a shear connection was required and a single plate shear connection was assigned. I can also double check to make sure that none of these joints have any moment on them and I can see that there is no moment and a moment connection is not applicable. At this point, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with all of the single plate beam column web connections that I've assigned to the first floor level. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically turn the entire structure back on and work my way up level to level using the same exact process. At this point, this completes the process for assigning a beam column web connection and RAM connection for an analyzed RAM structural system model with a special focus on selecting a shear connection design. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.